couple of questions about dialogue and engaging in dialogue with people. So the first um, issue that I face is uh, I have a very high need for intellectual stimulation. And I can't get that with most people. It's, it's something like um, you, can, you can have a dialogue for a time, but then... They, it's high trade openness. Yeah. 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 And, and and, but then they sort of run out of ideas and they, they can't yeah. keep up and uh, it sort of falls apart. And okay. I think this is a problem that intellectuals have um, quite frequently is that they, they, they sort of, once they start reading difficult and rewarding stuff, yeah. they, they stop wanting to talk to regular people. And I think that contributes to the disconnect that you see between intellectuals and working class people and, and stuff like that. And the other question I had was about... Okay, wait, I don't know if that's a question. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I, I believe there's a question in there, but I... I the question is, how, how, do you, how should we address that? How should I address it? And uh, is that something that can be addressed? Well, part of, part of the answer to that is that's what the universities were for. I mean, you know, not everybody is equipped to or interested in engaging in high-level discussion of abstract and creative ideas. You know, you hear this idea that everyone's creative. That's a lie. It's as straightforward as that. True creativity is very, very rare. And so, and if you happen to be a creative person, or if you happen to be someone who's profoundly interested in ideas, you are in a pronounced minority. Just as you are if you happen to be extremely extroverted, or extremely agreeable, or extremely conscientious. These are minority issues, and what you do is you find like-minded people who are capable of engaging that. You know, heavyweight, heavyweight weightlifters compete with heavyweight weightlifters for a reason, and everyone thinks that's fine. And the same thing applies to intellectual and creative endeavors. So, what you do is you try to find a community where that's that's the nature of the community, and you likely have to find a relationship like that as well, you know, so. I don't think so. I think what contributes to the siloing is the arrogance that goes along with it. Because if you're, you can be interested in ideas, and you can be creative. Well, that's the arrogance of the intellect, right? That's the thing the Catholic Church had warned about for centuries, is the arrogance of the intellect. So, because if you're... If you're wise as well as smart, and there is no relationship between being smart and being wise, they are not the same thing. There's no quick pathway from smart to wise. And many of the people who I've known who were very wise, were, well, some of them were intellectually impaired and were still wise, you know. So, it's the arrogance that brings up the block. And I see this, for example, happening in the United States in particular, because the last time I went down there, for example, I, was, I had friends down there, and, and, and some of those friends are very, very smart people. And some of them were talking about the Trump voters. And they were talking about the Trump voters with contempt. And I thought, you better watch that, because that's 50% of the damn population. And it might be convenient to think that they're stupid and beneath you, but it's not conducive to a civil state, and there's no evidence that it's true, because there isn't a straight line between intelligent and wise. And so I think that if, you're, if your character is developed, and you're intelligent, you can have your siloed creative community, but you develop enough wisdom so that you can see all the things that people can do that are of high ethical utility, that are outside the intellectual domain. You know, and I think that's why in the New Testament, I think that's why Christ is a carpenter. Right? Because, well, first of all, a carpenter is one of those jobs that when you're dishonest, it manifests itself immediately because what you build falls down. And so if you're an honest carpenter, you build a good house. So, so that, there's a nice metaphor there. But it's also, it's also um, a warning, in some sense, against the, the equation of intellectual brilliance with moral superiority. And so if the intellects would drop their moral superiority, and fat chance there is of that, then the divide between the working class, say, and the elite would, would resolve. And there's every reason to have respect for decent working class people. I mean, it's on their labor, as the left-wingers at least hypothetically agree, that the entire edifice of the culture is, is resting. So, you can have your cake and eat it too, but you have to not assume that your niche makes you superior. And it's very difficult for smart people, especially smart... There's this scene in Nietzsche's, it's in Thus Spake Zarathustra, 
where Zarathustra, the prophet, comes down from the mountain and he comes into a public square and there's this crowd around this little midget who's only about this high, who has a gigantic ear and everyone is marveling at him well, that's what the modern intellect is like it's a midget with a giant, well, mouth, generally, not an ear <laughs> and the, the, the being is underdeveloped, but the intellect is hyper-activated and, and it makes the person extraordinarily unbalanced and it's partly because, they, A, they can't compete outside the intellectual realm and that makes them very bitter because they tend to think, well, God, I'm so smart, everything should just come to me it's like, sorry, that's not how the world works and, and it, it also, that, that, and that, that, that attitude is immediately evident to people that they're talking to when they talk in the manner that they talk, if they are arrogant intellectuals of that sort you see that in, The Simpsons did a good job of that with comic book guy right, I mean he was completely useless in every possible dimension with an IQ of about 160 and it's very annoying to people who have an IQ of 160 that they can also be completely useless but it happens a lot, so